You can do your welcome. Am I gonna do my welcome? Okay, you know what? People have been telling us that we waste the first five minutes of every episode. I've heard that Joanne Welcome skips through the first five another episode. episode of five Volcast. minutes. <laughs> uh, we are, you've heard what you say? I didn't hear you. Okay, okay. so anyway, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to another episode of Vodcast. Yay. Yay. Today we have Joyce. Hi. Who is here <laughs> to join us in Vodcast. Yep. And uh, we're just going to go straight to the point, right? <laughs> yeah. So what do you think about the <laughs> general elections 2020? <laughs> I, I don't think I'm at, in a good space to be commenting about it. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> no comments, yes. No comments. Uh, we have Joyce today. Joyce, uh, yeah, uh, maybe you want to introduce yourself? Oh, um, briefly, yeah. So I am a psychologist. I work predominantly with uh, athletes and coaches, so... I guess, sports psychology. Um, I kind of did my training back in Australia, was in Brisbane for about two years to do the master's in the applied psych, majoring in sports and exercise. So mm-hmm. uh, that was my training. Wait, so what was your like bachelor's? Uh, my bachelor's was in psychology. In Australia also? Uh, so I did... Oh, this is a very long story. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's okay, no, we so... got an hour. <laughs> so, yeah, I can't no... complain again. Uh. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. No, so I, I studied at SMU. Oh. Um, I did my, my undergrad degree at SMU. Um, but then because I wanted to do the master's in, um, in Australia and I needed to get the like my undergrad degree accredited to say that, oh, you know, it, it meets the requirements to do the master's in Australia. Um, and I think because maybe SMU was a fairly, like, the program was quite new, so they didn't accredit Wait, as a four-year program. Psych, yeah. Oh. yeah. I mean, I was, when I went in, I was the second batch of the psych student, la, so, oh. I mean, obviously, they were still working around the curriculum and stuff mm. like that, so um, they didn't accredit my, my degree as a four-year honours program, so mm. I repeated my honours year, then I did another two years in the master's. Oh. Wow, so but the whole done. journey, how, how long did it take? How many years? Seven. Seven? Yeah. Wow. Seven. From wow. like when you were 19? Yep. Yeah, wow. yeah. Yes. Wow, okay. But I took a gap year also because I was like, oh, you know, I didn't expect my honours degree to, to not, not be accredited. Be accredited. <laughs> so I ended up, okay, you know, I'll just work for the year and then I'll do it next year. So is it accredited now? Uh, I mean, I will just use the Australian honours one now. Uh, mm. So that one is like automatically accredited? Uh, yeah, but that's, again, I guess if I want to do further studies in Australia, I, mm. I don't know whether it's going to be okay for other countries. I see. Yeah, every country mm. will have their own, I guess, requirements and system. Mm. Mm. Okay, I think, uh, maybe also set some context why we invited Joyce. Uh, I think there's a topic that we also want to talk about, which is about like mental, mental health, health in general. Mm. I think like, mental health is such a broad topic, right? There's mm. a lot of areas that we can discuss about. So mm. I don't think we have a very specific areas that, we want to go. Maybe we will, we will also discuss certain... I think especially now like with COVID, like mental health is even more relevant and critical. Because yeah. I was doing this like... <coughs> so my organization got this like uh, lunchtime thing yeah. like for like HR organized one, like wellness and stuff. So I went to um, attend one session and it was about like managing stress. Yeah. So like the psychologist was leading the session and she said like during this period, her center or like her... I, I don't know what, like, but they receive a lot more calls and uh, like uh, inquiries yeah. relating to... Because of COVID. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, because... It's, it's a time of uncertainty and uh, generally human beings don't like change. Mm. Um, like we like things to be status quo. We like things to be constant. Also like being able to predict and know what happens next and having a little bit of a plan um, makes things, I guess, like people feel safer. Mm. Um, and then once things are all up in the air, there's like, it's it's the unknown, right? Mm. Like So generally change induces stress la, in that mm. sense. Yeah, but it, a lot, a huge part of it is also depends on the individual's perception of like change. Like, mm what do they see change as um, their past experiences with change if in the past every time there's change it's it's been a good thing then they look forward to it uh, or if in the past you know every time they step into the unknown things worked out for them or they've been uh, they've had experiences where even though they don't quite know what's happening they step in and they find themselves landing on their feet then mm. it's kind of like oh, okay you know even though it's the unknown mm. um, I have a certain level of tolerance for uncertainty because I know at the end of it I'm going to be okay mm. so a lot of it I mean, I, I, I hate it because it feels very cliche when people say it's all in the mind, mm. but sometimes it actually is. Oh. Yeah. Just like how your mind has really been primed to treat 
change. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But then mm. at the same time, even though it's like all in the mind, it doesn't mean that you have full control over how you can manage it. Yeah. Like you probably still need to learn how to like recognize your symptoms, yep. then know what are the things you need to like do to maybe help yourself manage it, manage it better mm. and stuff like that. I mean, that's where I guess like, I mean, that's why childhood experiences or like yeah. growing up experiences, mm. all that makes a difference because you are taught that, you know, it's like if you think of uh, thought processes as like a habit, right? Mm. If we, we've we grown up learning that when we walk, it's left, right, left, right, left, right. Then now I suddenly ask you to change. Actually, it should be two steps left, one step right. It's going to take a while to change. And it's the same way with, with our thought processes, right? We've grown up thinking, oh, you know, thought A, thought B, thought C, or... When situation A happens, we have to think thought B and then thought C and then action D. Oh, right. But then if if that if maybe for a very long time that's been okay, but you are now faced with a new situation, then you cannot continue using that thought B and then C and then action D. Then oh. you need to learn a new thought process. So it's like forming a new habit. So it, it can be learned, it can be trained, uh, but it takes time. Uh. So that induces stress in people's minds. Uh, no, the situation in itself could be the one inducing stress. Um, your beliefs about certain situation could be the one inducing stress. Oh, wow. It just makes me think of like, you know, the that video that I go and comment, the racism Oh, stuff. that post. Yeah. So, okay. So recently, Zula came out with this video about, I think the title was like, Is This Racist or something? So mm-hmm. they had like a group of people, minorities, and then like two Chinese guys. And then they asked about whether this situation is racist. So it was like supposed to be a conversation amongst millennials yeah. on race. Yeah. And there were a lot of uh, Chinese people commenting in the comments. Yeah. Um, so there was one girl who wrote a damn long essay. Uh-huh. And there was a lot of... Uh, she was questioning a lot of what they were saying. Right? Mm. So I went to engage her. Yeah. But then like it felt like she was doubling down on what she was saying. And like she was asking even more questions to... Um, to question what they were saying, like, like the validity of what they're saying in order to... I guess because like, she's the part of the majority. Mm. It? And it makes me think of what you were saying about um, like if you really thought like thought A, thought B, thought C, and then yeah. now like if something jack in like that process, then yeah. it's like uncomfortable. Uh, it challenges your worldview yeah. ma, in that yeah. sense. So yeah. that's why it's... I guess like it becomes very... Like this thing, like now a lot of people are telling you that your worldview is wrong. Mm. Mm. Whereas it's like, hey, but I've lived my life like comfortably. I have no, I feel like morally I've not done anything wrong. Mm. And yet now you're telling me that all my life I've been living a like uh, a life of a criminal, mm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just for, for like living. I'm an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> then it, it kind of, I mean, with that, nobody likes to be challenged yeah, that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah kind yeah, of. If you threaten, mm. you know. Again, whether you feel threatened or not depends on Individual. I guess your yeah, depends on the past experiences. Mm. So like if in if if there's been if let's say you grow up um being used to challenge or you welcome the challenge where you you know, you see this challenge as an opportunity to learn, to grow, mm. um, to gain a new perspective on things, then having people challenge you won't be threatening. Mm. Yeah. So is there is that like a so called healthier way to think? Or is there like no such thing as like this one way is healthier than the other? You know what I mean? Um, I mean, I, I, it's I very don't, complex. yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's very yeah, complex, there's no like, like, I was just wondering whether there's any like black and white way to say that like, this way of thinking is correct and that way of thinking is wrong. No, I, I think it's, it's, no, I mean like, like, can I say it's, it's very complex in the sense that there's a lot of uh, variables or a lot of factors that come into play. So like, it also depends on your culture, depends on, <laughs> um, you know, what's considered the norm or, and all that. So like, you can think in a certain way, but if let's say your culture doesn't really accept that, then oh. thinking that way may not be so helpful. Yeah. And that could be more harmful to your mental health. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So it, yeah, very, very, it's, it's more complex than that. Yeah. Oh. And also depends on the situation. So I guess recently I was giving a workshop on uh, different types of coping strategies mm. and I was trying to figure out how do I categorize the different types of coping strategies. So when I explain, oh, you know, this this category, this category, this category. And um, so different ways of categorizing. So one of it is uh, avoidance mm. coping strategies versus uh, approach coping strategies. So avoidance, basically, if there's a situation and then exactly as it is, you you do things to kind of like move away from it. You don't, don't really want to. Mm. Sorry, just realized I moved away from the mic. <laughs> no, it's okay. Still can um, hear, still can hear. <laughs> uh, so you, instead of like, I guess, approaching the situation or say confronting your emotions, you, you kind of do things to, to move away from it. Lah. Um, and then the approach would be, yeah, lah, approaching those emotions. Or it could be um, uh, problem solving kind mm. of coping strategies or like 
emotion focused kind of coping strategy. So different ways. And when I was reading up the research, um, basically the, the conclusion is that there's no one way that's better than the other. Mm. It still depends on the situation. Mm. There are going to be si- certain situations, for example, things that's not within your control. Like you walk into a situation and the entire situation, there's nothing in there that you can control or change. Mm. Then maybe avoidance coping strategies would be better. Oh. Whereas if it's something that's within your control, then maybe approach coping strategies would be more helpful. Oh. Yeah, so it still depends on the situation, depends on your culture, depends on also what you're comfortable with. You don't want to end up using a coping strategy that's, you know, completely new or, or you know, it's caused you distress before. Then it's mm. just going to make you more stressed. So, mm. yeah. Oh. And so during your like everyday work, you need to do more research, like. Right? Uh no, yeah. Oh. yeah yeah so it's uh we adopt a more kind of like scientist practitioner model mm. um so we practice but we want to make sure that the strategies we use have been proven to be helpful oh. it's, it's it's almost like medicine right like when you give a medication you want to know that it's mm. been tested and trialed and and it works mm. oh so that means mm. you have to keep yourself constantly up to date on like what's mm. new in the research field so yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. that's why oh. we like we go for conferences that's why mm. we do research that's why we read research and all that lah. Oh. Mm. Do you think you can explain the difference between psychologists and psychiatrists? Because recently <laughs> I was like having a conversation with my friends and I like kind of like got confused between the two again. Yeah. Like keep referring to like, oh, my friend was a psycho- psychiatrist. <laughs> then my yeah. friend was like, wait, but psychiatrists are the ones who dispense medicine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So uh, think of like, so psychiatrists are, are doctors. So mm. I guess where they start is a little bit different. Mm. Um, uh, with psychiatry, it's more of like you start off studying med- medicine um, and then you move into the field of I guess, like brain diseases. So it's like uh, all doctors, you know, they start off studying medicine and then after that, they, they decide to be a cardiologist. Special, or yeah, in, in a field. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Century. So that's for psychiatry, mm. um, which is why they, they give medication and all that. Mm. Uh, whereas psychology is you start from studying psychology and then you move on to the becoming a practitioner. Uh. Oh. And so we don't give medication. Mm. Um we don't really study medicine. I mean, I think maybe clinical psychologists would study medication. So like, you know, they know the side effects and, mm. and what are the medications for certain kind of disorders. Um, most, of the cl- most of the time, clinical psychologists work together with psychiatrists. Uh, so the psychiatrists deal more with the medication side and then the psychologists deal more with the behavioral side. Mm. So psychologists, mm. in a sense, you, you don't recommend, you won't recommend like medication. Instead, you list down like the maybe the conditions or whatsoever this person has and that person will use will have this reference memo or whatever bring it to the psychiatrist um, where they will then diagnose it again and then recommend medication uh no so it's not that we don't recommend we we cannot prescribe the medication yeah, but can um, you recommend i think again depends on the the psychologist training so i have zero knowledge in medication i see um uh but i think depending on the training there so there if you are clinical be, maybe you they are may able have to some, yeah, yeah, recommend they may have some a knowledge. few yeah they may they may know um i don't know if they they will recommend um i think they might work more closely with the the psychiatrist to work out you know what medication and even then also the medication um uh each individual will have a different i guess cocktail or dosage mm. that will work for them mm. uh, so sometimes it's a, a bit of a mm. trial and error uh, just to see which like which medication works because there, there can be one medication sorry there can be several medication to treat one particular disorder oh. mm. wow. I'm just, yeah. uh, just thinking on a bigger picture about talking about mental health here in Singapore mm. because like I think for me I'm very I would say I guess plug in into how Americans talk about it especially mm. like their influencers they talk about mental health very openly mm. they talk about going for they therapy, about going for therapy. <laughs> they talk about like some of them having medication I guess a lot of YouTubers and like Twitch streamers they generally have some form of mental health mm. problems I mean I think we were just, I was just talking to Yvette like how because of their so called mental conditions that's also part of the reason why they are successful in the platform like like certain behavior that it rewards them working hard in a certain way mm-hmm. that that makes them popular in you in the YouTube space or like Mm-mm. in the streaming space. Okay. Yeah. So so they a lot of them always talk about how like not always but they have mentioned before in maybe certain interviews or casually about them maybe going through depression mm. or and they are like having certain medication or they are going through therapy la. and mm-hmm. they always recommend like everybody should go therapy yeah yeah. I'm just curious like what you think because I think in Singapore like we 
uh, I guess we are still quite con- we are very, very conservative, especially in a if you just look look at the Chinese approach when mm. it comes to mental health, like we are not very um open or smart about it. Mm. Like we just casually when people are we are behaving weirdly, we just say like hey, they're xiao one. Mm. You know, like in the public, like yeah. hey, don't go close, it's crazy. Mm. You know, like like we fear these people. Although like you can tell like they're not gonna harm you, but mm. and sometimes we, we try to distance ourselves because I guess we fear what we don't know, like mm. we don't understand. Yeah, but yeah. is it fair? I mean, as in, like, it's natural to feel uncomfortable in a situation where the person is not behaving normal. Right? Mm. 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 So I mean, is that? I mean, is it? So I feel like like okay for people to feel that yeah. way. So I I think it's okay, <laughs> but but at the same time, it's more about like understanding and learning that mm. you know they they are suffering from something. Mm. I mean, it's like uh someone who's crippled and walking. Mm-hmm. You don't fear them, right? Yeah. Right. You know, like oh, they're creeper. They are. They are quite poor thing. If you see them having trouble, you try to go forward and help them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Whereas mental issue is like it's not so obvious because, mm. like, if you see a creeper, you know that oh, the leg leg a problem. Mm. But you look at someone who's suffering from a mental condition. You look at them. You you don't know how to how to assist mm. you see mm. yeah yeah. I mean I guess so a few things there that you mentioned that I will kind of so one thing is um, I guess you talked about uh, in, in the states uh, it, it seems to be a lot more open about like mm. therapy talking about mental health and stuff like that I think our Asian culture might work against us because I think there's this we, we talk about say um, uh, help seeking behavior um, and I think maybe not just in Asia but you know, it, I think it's fairly strong here in Asia. Even in sport, also like it gets really tough. Like if someone is struggling, they don't necessarily um, uh, reach out to ask for help because help seeking behavior is not very common. Is it here. like like face like safe? A face little bit, yeah, mm. yeah. And then there's all these talk about, oh, uh, you know, don't air your dirty laundry. Mm. Um, mm. You know, if just just talk about it with um, your family and friends mm, and all mm. that. So the the language that we have even among ourselves, that kind of just discourages people to seek help. Mm. Um, like all the stigma and all that, uh, you know, it makes people feel more ashamed, mm. which is baffling to me because if let's say you talk about mental illnesses as um, say the z- a disease of the brain, why do you need to be ashamed of a disease of the brain compared to say having a disease of the lung or like the heart? Or the, or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So it's, it's kind of similar in that sense. Just because it's not visible doesn't mean doesn't mean it's anything different mm. um so yeah I, I think just i i think everybody should have their own therapist mm. um uh you know the, there's all these co- i mean it's called talk therapy having being able to to share about or to talk about what is it that you might be feeling or your experience or your thought processes um it gives you an opportunity to do a bit of a reflection which mm. i think it's very very important um and most of the time the therapist would kind of function as kind of like a a sounding board or a mirror. Mm. Things that maybe you didn't realize you were thinking, having that person kind of reflect it back Mm. to you or point it out Mm. to you uh, can be really helpful. Or sometimes if you just leave your thoughts in your head, it gets jumbled up. But Mm. you needing to speak to someone else means you have to make it clear. Mm. And in the process of making it clear to someone else, you are making it clear for yourself also. Mm. So um, I think that's where therapy can be really helpful. Mm. Even if you're not struggling with any mental illnesses or anything. So now I have a question. Um, Yeah. Just like, what if um, you... So a therapist will have that professional, I guess, tools to help you process your thoughts Mm. as compared to, let's say, if you, as we, like Asians, like to say, like, just talk to your friends or family, Mm. you know? Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that that can work too. Uh, it's that is one of the coping strategy: having the mm. social support, having mm. someone that you can speak to, having someone that, uh, you know, whether it's friends or family that that you trust, um, mm. that you can, uh, have conversations with or rant or mm. just verbalize. It's you needing to know which kind of friends are supportive in that way, lah. Mm. Yeah, because yeah. there could be some friends where. Um, maybe the way they respond <laughs> is not necessarily so helpful la. yeah, yeah. Because, like, when you when you say all those things I also thought about like how like I, I mean I also con- reflect about why why speaking to friends about problems helps me mm. and a lot of time it's also because like what you said like it gives clarity mm. to your thoughts so when you have to mouth it out and like mouth it out <laughs> Verbalize it. Yeah, verbalize it. Later, I stress. Uh, <laughs> it's okay, you got psychologists. Ahead. <laughs> yeah, so it's like when you, when you verbalize it, you, you put it into like 
words. Mm. It, it helps like clarify. So sometimes when I'm talking about it, it also gives me my own. Like it, I reflect. It helps me identify certain feelings that I have. Mm. If which I wouldn't have done it if I'm by myself. Mm. Yeah. I mean, like sometimes when we argue also, right? Then like you will like take some time to. You say out all these things, but then you're like pre It's like, okay, but this is just me trying to figure out what I'm trying to think. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. when we fight, that's what happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I, I thought th- those are useful. And mm. I think with friends, I think that's also what I try to do. Like, I think recently also... As in like if you're on the receiving end yeah. of your friend's mm. problem. And I think also, because I've been watching this, I, I've discussed this a few times. Like, a that few this times. Guy, He's a huge fan. Yeah, this guy <laughs> online, he's, uh-huh. uh, he streams... Um, He's a psychiatrist, mm. uh, and he he goes around speaking to Twitch streamers about about their mental health issues, and he helps them. So I when you I mean just looking at it, you I can tell like he engages certain techniques mm. and skills to yep. to to fish out. And most of the time, he's not actively feeding them about the things that they feel. Mm. It's more like he will call out certain things that they said. And like, how does that make you feel? Mm. Or like, when they make certain revelations, then he always rem- ask them, "How do you feel right now?" Mm. Oh. Yeah. So I, I, those are things that I also realized that I, I realized they are useful things to to do even when, like, when let's you say, are when you're friends. Your friends. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And I and I thought those are quite helpful. Mm. Yeah. 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 I yeah, mean, it's quite interesting because it's like sometimes when we. So, uh, I guess a huge part of what I do is also helping people process mm. certain experiences. Um, I think in this day and age, um, maybe not just in this day and age, like people are used to kind of like just go, go, go. You know, you experience mm. something and then, okay, yeah, that's the side. Like move it aside. Cool. Like, yeah, yeah. she got, be- like, got more important things to deal with. Yeah, yeah. It so, it's, it's, therapy provides <coughs> a space and time for them to process those emotions and those thoughts. So, like, you know, as someone describes a situation, then you can kind of like, okay, wait, hang on. When this was happening, what was happening for you. So it kind of helped them bring the attention inwards a little bit. Um, and then kind of like experience process and then then maybe, okay, you know, bring it outwards again and continue with the, the rest of the experience and, and stuff. Lah. So mm. just, yeah. yeah. Definitely it reminds me that one of the techniques that he offered to one of the people was that I think she's the, those kind like very repressed. I think she always try to she feel like she's not good enough in that sense and mm-hmm. like she don't deserve to be you know uh, like she doesn't take praises mm. and so on so so I think that what the psychiatrist did to her was like she to, he told her to like every night before she sleep kind of like meditate but at the mm. same time it's like kind of like go through everything that happens on that day mm. and think about how you feel mm. yeah so kind of like attach some certain emotions as you go along like oh. okay when I wake up, it's sort like, of like ignoring the emotion, like. right? So like, you know, maybe just now before going to bed, I was a bit frustrated because I couldn't find, you know, my favorite bolster, you know, mm. and then that leads to me feeling this way. And then before that, I, would, I have a small, uh, I feel a bit frustrated at my meal because it was like not delivered properly, you know. Mm. So, so it's like it kind of like a practice, like every day for oh, that person, like to, mindfulness, uh. yeah, to mm. kind of like recognizes the 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 range of emotions that he or she may feel for mm. the day. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I think I think th- that was like quite interesting to me. Because mm. like you say like, like about processing about emotions. Yeah. 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 And it's incre- increasing self-awareness also. Mm. I mean, mm. self-awareness is uh, I mean for I was going to say for sport but I realise it's generally <laughs> uh, it, it's very important because like with self-awareness then when you, only when you have the self awareness, that's when you can start making changes. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So if, if like you know in a, I mean I like to use sport as an example because I deal predominantly with sport. But it's like oh you know you go into a competition right. So imagine you're running a marathon mm. or maybe not a marathon four hundred meter race. Um, at the start line, you know the the gun goes off and then you start running. But say fifty meters into that race, something happens. Um, and then you're not self-aware that whatever that happens changes the way you are thinking or you're feeling and subsequently mm. affects, say, maybe your techniques when you're running, mm. then you're going to continue running with the impaired technique for mm. the rest, the remaining 350 meters, and it's going to affect your performance. Mm. And only when your coach comes to you and say, oh, you know, by the way, that happened at that 50 meter. But then it's over, your race is over. Mm. Compared to if, let's say, you have that self-awareness, something happened at the 50 meter, Maybe we won't be aware as it happens, but it could be, you know, you run for 50 meters before you realize, mm. 
hey, you know what, I'm affected. I'm gonna, mm. I need to change something. Then you still have that 300 meters to salvage it. Oh. So that's where I guess self-awareness mm. is, is really important. Um, mm. And I guess it, it takes training. It takes time uh, for people to, for that self-awareness to happen mm. um, soon after something else happens. Uh. Right. Mm. I feel like mental health is also like a practice on like the person's part. Like you have to of practice. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Mm. I think it's about like catching certain symptoms or like certain behaviors that a thought process that you you do mm. that, that is That's most of the time is natural. Anything. Like yeah. after many, many years, it, it's very natural for you to have this thought process. Yeah. Yeah. yeah which is actually maybe um may cause certain other mm like damage to you la, which you'll never realize it. Mm. Yeah. Then it's about recognizing because only when you recognize it then you can do something about it. If you yeah. don't know what is the problem, you're not able to treat it. Mm. Yeah. Same yeah. thing I like the analogy of the walking left, right, left, right. We've mm. grown up. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So same with the thought process. We've grown up thinking, oh after thought A is thought B, thought mm. C, thought D then So it's recognizing that you have this train of thought. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. the first step. Uh, yeah, mm. yeah. And mm. recognizing whether that those train of thoughts is helpful in a particular... Sh- it could be helpful mm. in one situation, but maybe not helpful in another situation. Mm. So that's why if you ask any psychologist for like questions and then answers, a lot of times the answers will be, it depends. <laughs> 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 I mean, like I, I teach um, I teach a course um, and like and there are people who come up to me after the class and they'll ask me, Oh, I have I experienced this situation or or somebody I work with has this. Uh, you know, what would you recommend? And I'm like, it depends because you're only giving one cross you're giving me yeah. like a cross section of yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know this person's history, I don't know your relationship with this person, I don't know how maybe you contribute to the situation or maybe you will be mm. helpful for the situation. Yeah. And we're all part of a larger system. So even mm. if we um, say you know we have these thoughts but you know like I said if we have certain thoughts and our culture is not accepting of it then mm. like it makes it hard for us to want to change those thoughts mm. also mm. so mm. oh that makes sense you know, it's like you know gears in the clock there are many many yeah, little yeah, gears yeah. and you can't just say fix one without affecting the rest of it mm. also just thinking right. about like I, I I noticed that like I think over the years I saw I noticed about something about myself because mm. I think growing Ooh, up self awareness happening yeah, <laughs> gr- growing up growing up I'm always very my my feelings and emotions had to be repressed okay yeah in my home environment like yeah. I also noticed it's also partly because of what my parents do to Wait, me is it because like of toxic masculinity also um, I was gonna I I, 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 <laughs> I, I think also. maybe not so much. I never con- look at it as a it's a because I'm a guy like a kind gender. of thing. Because yeah. I think it's like for example, the very basic thing is like when you're growing up, you do something wrong, mm. your parents hit you. Yeah. Then they're like, then you cry, then you cry, you cry some more. Yeah. <laughs> then you cry some more, you get hit more. <laughs> yeah. You know that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And then like in the house, cause I'm also the youngest, so it's mm. not so much because I'm a guy, but yeah. because I'm the youngest, like um, I cannot disrespect anyone who's older than me at home. Mm. Yeah, and because of that, like, if I'm upset, I cannot show that I'm upset. Mm. Mm. Oh no, you get wet yeah. anymore. Yeah, so I cannot show that I'm upset or I'm angry or whatever. Like, for example, I get scolded or do so- I didn't really do anything wrong, so I'm, like, really upset. I go to my room, I must make sure that I close my door softly. <laughs> if, if it sounds like I'm a bit angry, like, a bit, right? yeah. then it shows that I am showing my emotions mm. and I actually get it from my parents. Yeah. 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 So so over the years, I realized this is what happened to me, mm. and I think um I think as we grow older, I think like during my first relationship and so on, like I realized that I repress a lot of my emotions. Like I feel like I need to, like I need to act like how I feel like I need to be, mm. rather than how the I really really feel. Expectations mm. versus reality. yeah, like oh, oh, like maybe as a boyfriend, I need to be X Y Z. I need to do this, do that. Mm. Yeah. Even when I'm upset, I'm always pushing it aside. It's like, so what if I'm upset? It mm. doesn't matter. It's just what I feel. Yeah. 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 I mean, oh, yeah. Th- there are pros and cons to that. Mm. Um, always acting out on our emotions isn't necessarily the mm. best thing. Yeah. Uh, so in a sense that, you know, if we are angry with someone and we want to act on it, we might want to hit someone, punch yeah. someone. And Correct. so that's True. not necessarily True. a good thing. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, I guess, uh, it's more of okay working out the balance yeah you know I feel it I acknowledge these emotions what I choose to do about these emotions it's entirely my choice mm. um, am I in a particular situation maybe acting out on the emotions would be most helpful in another situation maybe acting out is not helpful so yeah. I guess I, I don't want to say it's a good thing but learning how to repress it 
I think and then learning how to let go of it mm. may be a bit easier compared to you know you just let it out and then now you have to rein it back in yeah. so it, it really yeah it depends uh, yeah, yeah. It's not necessarily a bad yeah, thing. So, so I'm not saying that I'm like mentally scarred. I'm like psychologically <laughs> unstable now no, no, because no, of the experiences. Yeah, yeah. But I, I do re- recognize like, like this is how I grew up with. And I also, like I think one of the things I realize is um, I actually do cry quite easily. Mm. Yeah. And um, I think that's a part of me that I have to, I've I'll constantly had to re- repress. Mm. Growing up. Like, yeah, I mean. growing up. So, mm. um, but then that, uh, I think it was counterproductive for me. Mm. Because it didn't make it better, it gets even harder. Mm. Like when I, when I, I think it's very easy to trigger tears when it comes to like, when I see someone who's crying. Mm. Yeah. yeah. When I'm angry, I also cry. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Then I think usually I don't cry, right? Like usually, generally my, I feel like my, my mood or my emotions generally is on a general positive. It's not like always a high. It's like a generally positive. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, I also recognize like sometimes frustration, I also just keep it in. Mm. And it comes out in the form of, um, I think like, for example, sometimes when I sleep, I, I can have very intense crying. Or I don't know what to call it, crying sessions. Mm, yeah. To kind of like, I guess it's a form of emotional Venting, release. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And when I I don't even remember what the dream is about. Mm. What am I crying about? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I thought those were like quite interesting. And initially, I was like, like, I kind of noticed it, but only after a while, then I realized that wait, this is something that happens, uh, on a rather regular basis. Is like maybe a few months or like every month it happens once. Mm. Yeah, mm. and then I was like, hmm. Then I went to research a bit. Oh, actually, it's like a thing. <laughs> like, like, like your mind is kind of like just like, you know, trying to. A lot of stress is trying to like release mm, coping. Tank, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's like yeah, found yeah. a coping mechanism. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. thought that was quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, different people cope in different ways. So I think mm. like so I I think what you brought up there when you said that even when you're angry or when you're frustrated, you cry, I think that is really key because a lot of times people think that oh when you're crying it means you're sad. Yeah. Mm. But it's not necessarily the case, <laughs> right? Uh yeah. yeah. People and then it also ways. links back to the toxic masculinity. Because you're like <laughs> like you wanna be angry, you want to show you're angry, and then you're crying, then yeah. you're like <laughs> Like, so it's like, people look at you, it's like, it, they don't know, like, I also don't know how I'm presenting myself at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Like, I want to be stern and angry, show emotion so that I can like, you know, get then my... Then your eyes yeah. are welling up. Yeah, then it's like, like one tear <laughs> drop out, then they're like, oh, then choking on my own tear. <laughs> it happened before. Yeah. Okay, I, I'll share this story. I was in, I was teaching, I was doing relief teaching after NS. Mm. Right, so after NS, I went back to my secondary school to teach. Mm. I think it was a sec one class. So I think, um, as, as with all naive uh, first time teachers you'll be like I want to be that cool teacher yeah. you know <laughs> I want to be the one that all the kids would like yeah. uh. so I go in trying to be very nice oh I'll tell you worst decision of my <laughs> life uh, the kids just climb over, <laughs> over my head climb over my body I'm just like oh I couldn't manage them so after right after that I tried to do damage damage control right no, I tried to, to be like bad reverse cop. yeah so so I tried to be this like I try to be as firm as I can, as stern mm. as I can. Mm. Yeah. And and although I'm not upset, like I, I try I scold them mm. and so on. And I think that of after a while it manifested in me really feeling upset. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like kinda of, you act it till you 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 fake it till you make it like, you know, <laughs> in the wrong way la. So I remember like scolding the kids. Go mm-hmm. once I like scold then <laughs> I was so upset. I don't know why I was so angry, so upset. That I also started crying <laughs> while scolding them. Yeah. And then the effort also came out. Oh <laughs> so this bunch of sad one kids. Yeah. Then, but I also yeah. I also cry yeah. when I'm angry. Eh? Mm. I feel like I feel like it's like when growing up, like, you never see male teachers cry in class. Yeah. Then you always see you always end up making female teachers cry. Yeah. And then you actually I can imagine like the sad one kids going, Hey, hey, Mr. Ung cry. Eh. Yeah, Mr. Ung cry. Eh. Mr. Ung cry. Eh. <laughs> mm. Yeah, then I, I think I gonna complain once. Huh? Like, was a kid, the F a word? kid, yeah, a kid wrote a note to I don't know who oh, la. Oh, that's a... Then the HOD came and talked to me. Mm. But I think that was also partly because it was after NS. That, uh, I mean, not making excuses. Even now, I also use the F <laughs> words, but, but like I was constantly trying to avoid doing it. Yeah. Yeah, but when I was so upset, it kind of like I kind of like lost control a bit lah. Inhibitions, I guess. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So yeah, that was quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, fucked up story. 
Sorry, <laughs> my kids. I, I don't even... How old are they now? Oh, shit. I think they're like... It's like one thirteen, right? I think they're early 20s already. Oh! <gasps> yeah. Damn. When I was... Tisha, I was 21. One. Then they were like 13. 13. So what's the age difference? Okay, uh, we give her uh, 30 minutes to <laughs> figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> Eight years sometimes, difference. Maybe sometimes wow. ten years difference. She also took a while. <laughs> Let's give her thirty minutes. Huh? Okay. No, I was gonna say. I hope like you crying in class gives them a, uh like helps them break that stigma or stereotype that you know guys shouldn't be crying lah. Mm, I don't yeah. think it's that easy lah. I mean, uh, yeah, of course not lah. <laughs> I think yeah. in the Chinese or uh, like the Asian culture stereotype. Or Singapore Actually, la. generally like even mm. the Western world is the same yeah. thing lah. Yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, toxic masculinity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah. anyway, I was wondering, right? So, as a psychologist yourself, what coping mechanisms do you use for yourself? You know, when um, you experience mm. emotions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, it reminds me of something. What? It's like, you know, when I was an NS in medic, right? Then it's like, medic, you, you sometimes you fall sick, then you report sick. Mm-hmm. Then like, huh? medic fall sick, <laughs> uh? Like, many po- <laughs> run, uh. we're not humans uh. <laughs> many cannot fall sick uh. then it's like I think the, the, the thing is like oh psychologists they they should know how to handle their mental health mm. yeah, yeah yeah I mean I guess uh, so actually we, we did have uh, I think one of my classes when I was uh, studying in, in Australia was uh, they did talk about self care for psychologists mm. um, and then they did also talk about uh uh, I guess they, they made us aware of some of the situations we may experience as, um, I guess, early practitioners, uh, some of the difficulties and stuff like that. And um, it's, I think because, I don't know whether it's the nature of the, the occupation or, you know, we had the foresight of like previous psychologists. Uh, it, it's actually part and parcel of our, um, I guess, requirement or training uh, to have regular supervision. Mm. Um, I mean, for myself, I use that supervision to learn and to learn and know more about uh, like say I encounter a client with certain situation and I have absolutely no idea what to do then mm. I ask my supervisor okay you know this was the case what am I supposed to do and stuff mm. like that or there are situations where um, I guess I'm I'm a little bit more self-reflective like I had a conversation with a coach and I got really 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 frustrated and I spoke to my supervisor and I was like I was feeling this and I was like you know I don't mm. know what to do like why is it like that um, and like so I, I guess in a sense it's like therapy for myself mm-hmm. um but it's work related lah, so th- that's for supervision but i guess i have my own strategies in it um uh i i like to go for runs mm-hmm. uh, and then when i run i don't like to run with anybody else because i feel like if i run with someone i have to make conversation right oh <laughs> but when i run <laughs> um this is like it's me time and mm-hmm. i i guess i do a bit of mindfulness of sorts so when i run i'm kind of like counting my steps Oh. Like one, two, three, four, one, mm-hmm. two, three, four. So like there's nothing in my mind and mm. it's it's just a blank space and I have that like half an hour like just to myself or I'm just listening to the music and I'm just like just, just running la. like mm. just trying to keep the mind blank. Um the other thing is also uh I this was interesting because uh, uh there was a question that was not a question, but I, I was checking in with some friends during this COVID period and um, like they're telling me things halfway and it's like, oh, you know, I don't want to dump this negativity on you. Like, mm. I don't want you to be negative either. And I was like, huh, dude, I'm trained for this. <laughs> I'm a psychologist, right? Uh, but it's, I guess I'm trained for this in a sense that uh, ultimately I, I uh, there was a line that I learned in my master's program where um, the supervisor was just sharing, you are there to help people, faci- to facilitate people's growth you're not there to solve their problems. Oh. Mm. So, like, you know, I'm, I'm just another tool that they can use to solve their problems if they choose to solve. Mm. So I don't, it's not like I end the work day going home thinking like, oh, you know, there's all these problems I need to solve. Mm. Um, mm. It's, oh, you know, they are there and when the client is ready to solve and they have the resources, then they will solve it. Mm. I might provide suggestions, whether they take it up or not, it's their choice. Mm. Um, so it's also recognizing, I guess, what's within my control and what's not within my control. Mm. Um, I, again, these are like coping strategies that people have. I mean, that I share with athletes also like, okay, you're anxious, you're stressed about this upcoming competition. What is within your control? What's not within your control? Mm. Turn your attention to the things you can control. Um, you know, engage in breathing strategies, engage in mindfulness, uh, you know, listen to music, speak to friends. So all these coping strategies also I use. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, of course, there are times where I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm not so good with the self-care. I'm not really coping <laughs> so well. Uh, but yeah, mm. it helps to have 
other psychology friends um, or other friends who... I guess I'm, I'm also very open with my feelings. I'm like, oh, you know, rah, I'm angry. <laughs> uh, and, and so like people can see and then mm. like they step in and they remind me. So I've been very fortunate, I guess. Mm. Mm. So do you have like, we were talking about it just now, occupational mm. hazards. Yes. Like, yeah, as a yeah. psychologist, do you feel compelled to give free therapy sessions, you know? Mm. If your friends mm. come to you and be like, oh my God, joy. <laughs> <laughs> I did actually, I did find that after I came back from uh, from Australia, uh, I did have some friends who started contacting me more just to talk to me. <laughs> mm. um, uh, I, there are occupational hazards in that I think it, I changed the way I respond to them. Mm. Like before I became, before my training and after my training, I, I feel like I do respond to them in a slightly different way. Um, like we learn about active listening, we learn about being empathic, we learn about um, like nonverbal cues and all that mm. stuff, uh, encouragers and um, like mini prompts and stuff like that to get the person to continue talking. Mm. And, and I find that I do that a little bit more. Mm. Um, and then also, I guess we've been told not to, I mean, when in our training as a psych also, we don't give advice. Mm. Uh, most of the time, if we do want to share some information, we ask for permission. By the way, can I? Sh- I I know a little bit about this. Can I share this information with you? Mm. Mm. And I find myself doing that more when Her friends friends. are renting to me also. Mm. So I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, oh this, this, yeah, this is actually true. very good to know because like, mm. I'm just wondering, like in our own friendships and stuff, right? Sometimes mm. when friends rent to me, then I feel like I don't know how to respond. Mm. Like I don't know how do I... Like am I supposed to give the person advice? Because you know, sometimes... Uh, with female friends they just want to rent yeah. they don't want you to give advice say no I don't need you to solve my problem yeah, right? yeah. so I will have to like actively hold myself back because my instinct is to okay how do I help you solve your problem yeah, yeah. so it's like quite interesting to hear okay so we're just here to help them facilitate them to process their own thoughts because they mm. really know what they can do yeah. right yeah, yeah I mean I mean that's also with I think I would like to assume with most psychologists that's the that's the underlying philosophy mm. like they already have the solutions. It's just mm. that at this point of time, maybe they're stuck or they're blinded by certain emotions or certain situation. Mm. Um, you know, the obstacle is so big that they can't kind of like see past mm. it. And uh, we're just getting them to, okay, you know, in the past, were there similar situations? Mm. What did you do? Was it helpful? Mm. Was it not so helpful? So kind of like a strengths-based approach, you already have the resources, you mm. already have the solutions. Mm. Um, let's see which one fits the current situation. Mm. So it's to keep them talking. Uh. So it's kind yeah. of like a mirror in the sense to help them see more clearly how mm. they think. Mm. Yeah. 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 thought that was quite interesting. Because yeah. I think the, the psychologist, the guy that I follow, he also mentions along the same line. Like he's mm. not there he can't save you mm. yeah but he can help you process it yeah better mm. to, so to look for solutions that you actually may already have mm. yeah based on certain like maybe your your childhood or so or like mm. there are like times where where that that you may have internally resolved it mm. and sometimes it's like using those experiences that you think about it more deeply why you feel this way mm. why you feel relief why you feel happy about that moment and then use that as a thought process to figure out how do you can kind of like reflect those ch- changes that you made back then mm. to what you what you feel right now. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So I thought those yeah. those those were quite interesting. Yeah. And yeah. But what about situations where you don't feel like engaging your friends in um mm. like <laughs> when they are renting to you? Because okay, so I I'm a intro- friends. No, don't <laughs> <laughs> no, you said I listen to you all the time. I never said, I never said to who. <laughs> you are so guilty for sure. I'm like, broadly, no. events, right? <laughs> easy. <laughs> guilty conscious, easy. Okay, but anyway, I'm just trying to explain, like, because I'm an introvert, right? I have, I'm, I'm, I keep to myself uh, quite a bit and mm. I'm very comfortable by myself. So I only have like a small group of friends, like very close friends. But then for Kenneth, who's an extrovert and he, you got like, a large group of friends that you are always very willing to engage with and stuff. Mm. I guess, what is it, like larger capacity Social. to deal with? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like, what do you do if you um don't feel equipped like emotionally yourself to deal, mm. to not deal with, but like to like Support, talk to friends, uh, yeah. you know? Mm. Yeah, to be a good supportive yeah. friend and not I mean, instead of being like a dismissive asshole. Can I, can I add one thing first? Okay. I feel like, I feel like the first thing is that you made the assumption that if you don't deal with your friend, you are a terrible friend. No, man. <laughs> I feel like that's your that's I think that's the, that's one of the first thing that you need to recognize. Like you immediately think that because you you are not able to give your friend that or that hundred percent attention at that point where you mm. may not be equipped or like you feel like you're in the right space to mm. do so that you're a terrible friend. I feel like that is a that's a bad assumption. Mm. 
Yeah. Um, that may be an unhelpful belief. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah. I, 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 I hear what you're saying. Mm. Uh, I think, like, so move, uh, kind of like, a little bit of an extension of the occupational hazard. Like, there are times where I'm speaking with a friend and I'm um, like, crap, am I speaking to you as a psychologist or a friend? Mm. Um, like, what, what are you, like, just because you know I'm a psychologist and you approach me to have conversations, like, what role are you expecting me to play? Right. Because if I'm a friend, the way I respond to you will be very different mm. if, compared to if I'm a psychologist. So I think at the start, um, at the start when I had a lot of people approaching me, I, um, they talked halfway, I was like, wait, 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 stop, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. Are you expecting me to be the psych now or to be your friend now? Mm. <laughs> um, and then I guess there are situations also where, where I mean, if they are a friend and they're engaging me and I'm kind of like, you know, I'm out of it, I, I might just go, by the way, just a heads up, I'm not, I'm not all there. Mm. I'm, I mean, I'm struggling on my own. I'm happy to listen. Um, but I just thought I'll let you know that, you know, whatever you're expecting, I may not be able to provide it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think also I, I've been fortunate in that. Um, I think maybe because I set my boundaries quite clear with some of the friends or some of my friends, they they know when I, when I look like, mm. yep, you know what? My headspace is gone already. Mm. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just really tired already. Then, then they will... Yeah, they kind of know, or when they reach out to me I'll just like oh sorry like how about we reschedule oh. so I, I don't tell them no outrightly I just can mm. we do this mm-hmm. another day like you can just say okay I'll respond to you later mm. right? yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean that's what we do also uh, sometimes mm. oh yeah like yeah. when we fight is it or like just having like conversations sometimes oh, mm. oh yeah like when we're busy but actually something. I recently I thought about it like you know the whole racism conversation you, oh. you brought up to me like I think in the middle of the to, day. Yeah, in the middle of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually, I find it, I was having problems trying to... No, it was end of the day, then you just wanted to slack. I think I was very tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then I was like, oh shit, I, I, it's, 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 it's a very complicated topic <laughs> that you need to think about the nuances, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's about like communication, no? yeah. yeah, I think it's about... I think first, what you can do is if you struggle that to a friend and you... I mean, your intentions are genuine, right? Your intentions mm. is good. Like, at the end of the day, you want to be there for the person properly and mm. you know that there are certain times you're not able to do that mm. and you feel bad because that's you, what they need yeah, at that moment yeah. right I think it's about communicating this to your friend that mm. sometimes this happen mm. and then figure out what's this communication um, strategy that you guys can have mm. like certain um, hints or like certain or maybe it's just an outrightly saying that sorry is, is it okay for me to sometimes tell you that you need you you need a bit of time to process what she just mm, said, mm, mm, or like, mm. is it okay for me to reply you at the end of the day? Because sometimes you feel pressured mm. to immediately reply. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. and like, not not that not that what you are saying is is irritating to me, but like you yeah. know, it's just sometimes I need time. Yeah, mm. but I think like my friends also can feel when I don't reply immediately, I reply at the end of the day. That's when they know okay, if it's busy. You know? mm. yeah. yeah, I have, I have this. <sighs> I'm very mindful because I have this little strategy. So on my um on my phone, so I, I turn off the read receipts thing. Oh, same. Yeah, because uh, for for various reasons, one of it is um like sometimes when clients reach out to me, mm-hmm. even though I've read it, I don't necessarily respond straight away mm. because I want to give them that time and space to learn how to solve it themselves. Oh. So that's one. The other one is also if they are really uncomfortable, depending on the situation. Of course, if the situation is completely safe, it's just you know, they're uncomfortable with the situation, then I let them sit with the discomfort before I respond to them. Because, I mean, it's going to happen in life. You don't hmm. have instantaneous solutions. And it's also about um, you know, be comfortable with the uncomfortable kind of stuff. Mm. Uh, so I don't respond straight away. And I like making sure I turn off the re- receipts kind of like put a little bit of distance up. Mm. Whether it's for, for themselves with the problem or just for myself, I'm like... Okay, I'm not in the hit space yet. I'm not gonna reply yet. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's interesting. So, yeah, to think. Mm. Yeah, it's like a strategy. Also. Yes. Yeah yeah. 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 Wow. So that means actually, if your clients can reach you on text all the time, you are on call twenty four seven. Uh yeah, but I mean, of course, also I try and set the boundaries myself, lah. Like, mm. I I try not to respond to anything after a certain time. For mm. one, I want to make sure that they're getting their sleep. Mm. Um, there are only certain texts or certain at certain clients I know who may be at risk of harm to themselves or harming other mm. people and stuff like that. That one, then I'm, I'm more responsive. Lah. But otherwise, if not, like if they text me quite late at night, I'm kind of like, yeah, okay, you know, like the next morning. Hours. <laughs> not, not really after working hours, I guess. Because um, I'm also mindful. So, I mean, now COVID situation, nobody's traveling, but I had athletes who were in a different time zone. Mm. 
Um, and so then, then I will respond to those athletes in those different time zones. I try to make sure, okay, you know, if it's certain timing, they should be asleep, mm. then I won't respond. Nah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Mm. Well, yeah. Just now you were like mentioning your friends are trying to set you up and then you know, we'll have like conversations. <laughs> so then I like think, that made me think like, how's dating for a psychologist? Do you, like how do you, do you like sit down with someone and then like you start to like psychoanalyze? You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I don't know if I do it consciously. I, I hope I don't. I mean, I feel like it's also like, I'd like to think I can switch off but I'm really not sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Because I mean, it's who you are, right? I mean, it kind your of work intertwine, is, right? Yeah. I mean training. that's for all occupations, what? Yeah. Right. So uh, ev- not necessarily, I mean, like yeah, generally, like people of a certain occupations, think they may a think a certain way, or, and mm. and that also reflects to their day to day life mm. on how they process certain things or yeah. problem solve, mm, mm, mm. yeah, or communicate. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, I mean, like, I think if I ask questions or if I, I think I'm pretty good at keeping conversations going. Mm. That might be, you know, a result of the <laughs> training. <laughs> It's a psych. Um, <laughs> it's like the guy pay for the dinner. How do you feel about it? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the role of men in society? <laughs> no la, not like and that. Whoa, la. that's so intense. <laughs> I'm just paying for dinner. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I like, I, I think I'm pretty good at, at keeping conversations going. Mm. Um, uh, I sometimes get a bit uncomfortable with talking about myself. Mm. Uh, like, but generally, you know, in a psych session. I don't talk about myself. I get the other person to keep talking about themselves. So mm. sometimes I'm a bit uncomfortable and I can get a bit mindful. I was like, crap, you know, I took up too much airtime. Oh. Um, and I'll like reflect. I was like, oh, so you know, so what do you... Like I try to find <laughs> a new topic. Um, and then, you know, now like there's all these dating apps, right? Mm. I think I... I think I think too much into it. Oh. <laughs> because my friend was just asking me about it and I was like, yeah, you know, I, I, I basically seem to like like not click on anyone mm. <laughs> because I no have my anyone. yeah because I have my own set of rules like oh you know if if I if I see the the profile pic you know a lot of it is like selfies I was like mm, yeah you know might be so you said go analyze the selfies <laughs> <laughs> no like yeah. I was like oh, you know why why is it mostly self like there's a part of me like oh you know it's it's selfies is it there's like certain sense of like self centeredness self absorption mm. um, mm. like are mm. you gonna be considerate towards other people <laughs> like would you be thinking would you be able to view things from a different perspective mm. other than from your own um or or you know like if there's too many emojis in the description <laughs> I'm like yep yeah, nope you know like <laughs> communication break now <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah you know that that kind of thing or um or I'm also mindful of okay I don't know whether this sounds racist or not but like <laughs> names so I. I tell myself, okay, you know, I'm I'm open to like, equal opportunities flirt or whatever you want to call <laughs> yeah. it, right? Like yeah. I'm open to like yeah. any like anyone. chatting with anyone. Yeah, just chatting yeah. with anyone, just making friends, right? Yeah. Getting acquaintances. Um, but if I see the name and it feels like a very super traditional name, um, I get a bit wary or so because mm. I don't think I'm a very conventional mm. girl. I feel like I'm a bit of a rebel. I I try to do things a little bit differently. Mm. Um and I try to break stereotypes. Like, I hate stereotypes and I'm like, mm. oh, mm. girl cannot ride motorbike? Fine, I'm just gonna go <laughs> ride it. You know, like, or, or like, last time when we were younger, they said, oh, you know, if you pierce your ears at, on, don't know, the left or right means you're lesbian. I was like, okay, I'm gonna purposely go and pierce just to show like, just, <laughs> just a little bit of a rebel, yeah. you know? And like, so hey, I feel girls like... Girls these days cannot cook. <laughs> I'm gonna cook! cook. <laughs> cook a fabulous meal. <laughs> yeah, like, really, like, something like that, lah, right? Yeah. So, um... So yeah, like I feel like if it's a super traditional name, it's a reflection of their parents and the parents' values oh, and stuff and like, like that. The, how they grew up. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm like, yeah. if it's gonna progress into a relationship, I want to make sure like things are gonna be okay, lah. You know. Mm. So I was like, oh, okay, yeah, super traditional name, maybe not. <laughs> like, so, yeah, I oh, think that's I think interesting. too much. Interesting. I never yeah. thought of like judging, uh, assessing the person based on their names. Like when I was on dating apps, mm. but then I have to admit that like sometimes it's kind of difficult. Because I think I'm... Am I might quite a strong feminist, Kenneth? <laughs> I would... Say yes. Like, sometimes it's difficult to... I think it depends. To. Sometimes you, you get very worked up. But it's not... It's not... It's not, like, specific to, like... Feminist in general. Yeah. Oh, feminism it, in general. So you just get it's worked, just like up worked up in general. It's just, like, worked up in certain... I mean... Most of us will get worked up when you feel attacked. Oh, yeah. Then there are certain times when people point out certain opinions... Uh, which is not personal, but you may treat it, you may somehow process it as it's kind of personal. Oh, okay. But anyway, I was just trying yeah. to say that, like, 
um, like when I was on dating apps, I had this mindset. I want to like find a guy who's open minded and I can talk about feminism and a guy who believes in feminism. But she's mm. very hard to find Singaporean guys who know exactly what it is mm-hmm. and believe in it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We had this um, episode on feminism, did we? Yeah. Yeah, 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 we did. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't like publicly tell people that I'm a feminist, la, yeah. but mm. based on Yvette's definition, I'm apparently a feminist. Apparently. <laughs> See, yeah. apparently. So, so it's like, it's not something that like, I, I, I take that, that whole label, label to mm. myself. Mm. Yeah. I, like, I do believe like, like, you know, there should be gender equality, that there's work to be done mm-hmm. in order for that to be achieved. But like, I never consider consciously think that oh that makes me a feminist mm. I'm championing for f- women's rights yeah. Mm. yeah but I mean that's where like that's why it's important to have conversations yeah. and to, to keep clarifying because everybody's definition of a particular word yeah. could right. be really yeah. really different yeah. like I think one of the clients I work with um, uh, actually two of them had similar uh, encounters with a particular uh, when they were competing it's same sport same encounter um, like they make a mistake and then they kind of just downward spiral mm. um, and then we were just talking about okay you know what what kind of words can be used to help reset or like kind of like help get you back on track uh? and then one one athlete said wanted to use the word reset mm. and then another athlete the word reset is a very bad word to use because it means you start from zero uh, they yeah. wanted to use yeah. default instead and it's it's just examples like that. Yeah. Like so, what you define as feminism could be someone else's definition of gender equality, mm. which you know may encompass slightly different things. Uh. so mm. it's mm. it's needing to have that conversation to mm. understand. Yeah. Okay, you know when you say this, what did you mean? Uh, Instead of making yeah. the assumption, and that's how you get people talking also. Mm. Yeah. Um, in the conversation, and that's how you help people clarify their mm. own thought processes. Because sometimes they might say things like, like just on the whim, or, not on the whim, but very. Like easily, cuff. yeah, off the cuff mm. and without really thinking what did they what do they mean by mm. that? La. Mm. I thought mm. the point just now you also talked about like the app of them taking selfies. <laughs> but I'm like Actually I would that's wait, what I would, is, I would okay, But that's I what you need them. to do. Uh, in, you cannot be taking, you know Look uh, at these beautiful mountains. Beautiful <laughs> landscapes. Then would you like to date me? Like <laughs> No, I mean I'm just saying it's it's like if all their photos are selfies Okay, what's your um, good ratio then? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Two, three, two, two. She was just like, analyze like, oh, this guy, the body language, he's a fuck boy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, but like, legit, if you see like photos where the guy, and then you can't tell which guy he is, you also will judge, right? Yeah. All right. Like, like group I photo. Mean, yeah. Like, dude, yeah, like, who are not you? dating your whole yeah. clique or your family. <laughs> or like, if you put photos where he's like the one guy, then like two girls, eh, I'm a fuck boy. Or, you know, like, <laughs> I'll be like, hey, mm, nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but I, I don't actually know what's a good ratio. It's just like, oh, scroll, scroll, scroll. I was like, mm, yeah, okay, that feels too much. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yo, yeah. But I mean, you also would judge them on the artistic quality of their photos. I would. <laughs> yeah, la. Like, I if mean, it's the ugliest photo, I'm like, no, I wouldn't. First impression, yeah, la, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. this is the only data points you yeah, have yeah, yeah. to... To, to, to get to know that person yeah. at that moment so yeah but like just just yeah. watching my own behaviours when I'm going through the app I'm like I'm realising some things about myself lah mm. um, so wow, like that plain sound though I think that's from the NDP rehearsal so. now oh. but it's <laughs> yeah it's it's Saturday, Saturday. Yeah. Uh, anyway it, this episode will come out on National Day I think oh, oh. happy National Day <laughs> 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 totally yeah, forgot about it. Uh. And play. Oh, freedom, oh, so I mean, hey, democracy. Okay. This year, huh? Democracy. I don't know lah. It's anyhow shouting lah. <laughs> anyway, this year P fives won't get a watch lah. Like, because usually every year P five we get to. <laughs> Who cares? It's a tradition, but they anyway. won't get a watch yet. You think P five? I thought P four. P5? I cannot remember. P four or P three le? I don't think it's P five. I don't think P- it, I was P five. I don't know. Uh, you retain is it? P five. Retain for two years. I repeat P three two years. <laughs> Why do you always say before the play yeah, the, the the selfies? Um, dating. Oh, you um, notice some things about yourself. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, some things that I don't really like. <laughs> <laughs> like. I I think I'm more judgmental. Uh, no, more yeah, more judgmental and more superficial than I would like to be. Uh-huh. But I think it's normal for dating apps, though. Yeah, I, I no, know, I think the dating app like, makes you feel that way. Yeah. Because uh-huh. when, when I first was on Tinder, I play around. After a while, I also feel very superficial. Mm. Yeah, because. That's the like only a, thing you're judging it feels like based a game on also. pictures. Yeah. Mm. yeah, you're not judging on how they talk, mm. you know, yeah, how they behave. 
Yeah. So after a while, I also got kind of like jaded from mm. from those apps. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But and also, cause I don't get much match. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not. That's the secondary <laughs> point. <laughs> I make myself feel better. Uh, you know, if I want really wanted, I could have got it. Yeah, but I also realized I don't really swipe right. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, you want your quality measure. Yeah, yeah. Because you make, make this, you make, you make the whole thing just purely about the the swiping is really purely on the physical traits, mm. right? Yeah. Like you, you, you probably had a threshold, mm. right? So once they cross the threshold, it's like okay, what do they put in their profile then, right? Mm. Or oh, too much emojis, fuck <laughs> this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, like if it ma- being marketed as a dating app, then there's a there's a specific angle you have in mind, yeah, right? Like yeah. you don't go in just to like it's a dating app and then you expect to just make friends, right? Yeah, like yeah. so it, the the way it's, I mean, of course, again, different people go into it with different expectations, mm, but correct. it feels like the predominant marketing. I guess objective there is you know it gets people to date la, and get mm. into relationships I was like yeah okay la, then these are my standards la, you know mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, if yeah, I'm there true. to make friends then fine you know I'll just like say okay to everybody because yeah. I'm just there to make friends right mm. I won't even say oh you know like which particular gender if it's I'm there to make friends I can make female friends also it doesn't mm. matter so but yeah mm. do you want to talk mm. about this I think we still have some a bit of time we can talk about In- this Boston syndrome yeah <laughs> Okay, hey, so I'm like not trying to turn this into a free therapy session. This cannot go and send the whole thing. It's not about Yvette, okay? Uh, you wrote it there. Then I sent yeah, it. Yeah, then la. I was thinking about it. Then I was like, actually, it's not about me, what? Okay? <laughs> oh, we don't have to talk about that. We can talk about, I guess, like um, how how sports psychology can be transferred to... Mm. Um, like um, normal, everyday. Mm, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think... So, this is... It's interesting also because a lot of people... When I tell people I'm a sports psychologist or I trained as a sports psych, mm. uh, the, the common thing is like, oh, you know, it's so specialised. Mm. What can you do outside of this? Mm. Um, but if you look at sports psychology as more like performance psychology mm. and essentially we are basically performing in everyday, mm. most every mm. other aspects of our life. So then a lot of things are, are quite yeah. transferable. La. So like we talked about stress management, mm. something all athletes will do, there's something anybody will have to do. And the self-awareness. Like performing yeah, the in self-awareness. life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Performing in life. Yeah, yeah, perform- yeah really, really, performing in life. In a, in a, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like the concepts we talk about, controllables versus uncontrollables, it's not just for sport, it's mm. yeah. things that happen in life. Um, you know, things about you, we in sports psychology, we talk about attention and concentration, how to manage that. Mm. That's also things that you you have to you can apply in mm. in life. Um, there are basic mental skills that we teach athletes, uh, like goal setting, um, imagery or self talk, mm. uh, and those things can also be used in life. So, right. like, I mean, for us to be working to to keep improving ourselves, we need to have a clear target. So that's the goal setting part. Mm. I'm sure everybody have heard of the SMART acronym, specific, measurable. No. Um, oh Never no. Okay. It. So it's a. Uh, <laughs> uh yeah, I'm smart. What are you talking about. <laughs> okay, he hasn't heard of it. Yeah, I yeah, no mind, but I let I let Joyce uh explain what SMART is. <laughs> so uh, so SMART is uh, is an acronym that people use to set goals. Um, I, oh, yeah, I think I heard of it. Yeah. Yeah, and there are many different versions. So if you Google it, mm. uh, the the common ones would be like, so S would be specific. Um, so when you set a goal to say you know I want to be better like better is so general mm. what exactly do you want to be better in mm. um, so M would be measurable oh my god sorry the sound <laughs> that's okay should I keep talking or do I wait I, I need to rent a studio then <laughs> <laughs> I can continue talking sorry about yeah. the sound guys so uh, M would be measurable how do you track your progress mm. like okay. I want, if I say I want to get better how do I know I am actually getting better mm. um, so like say maybe if it's tennis serves right I want to increase my accuracy by 10% maybe last time or you know I aim at that spot five out of ten times then I get it's like basically mm. luck but I want to increase it to say 60% so that's a measurable um, A would okay so A different versions out there I like to use uh, action oriented because it forces people to make a plan mm. so I have this goal how am I going to help myself get there what kind of action am I going to be taking mm. and then R would be realistic we want it to be realistic not like so hard to achieve mm. that it makes people very, feel very overwhelmed and, mm. and intimidated but of course also not something so easy until like yeah, you know, you know what's the point like yeah. Yeah. yeah and then T would be time based uh, so you need to set a deadline mm. I can't you know set a SMAR 
go and then five years later you can ask me I was like yeah I still have this goal but I haven't actioned on it <laughs> yeah. uh, so it needs to be time based uh. mm. um, so that's goal setting mm. uh, we generally and, and that process helps make sure that the goals are, again there's an action plan it's it's specific uh, we try to get them to focus on things that they can control mm. um, because if let's say you set goals like outcome goals I want to win that's not really within your control because oh. whether I win depends on whether you lose or not. Right. Whether I come in first, second, or third depends on how other people perform because mm. like that's all relative. Mm. Uh, so that's not within our control. So mm. setting certain types of goals that's more within your control helps reduce stress, helps direct your attention because you know if anything uncontrollable happens, you turn your attention to this particular goal instead and you mm. know exactly what you need to do. Mm. So that's for goal setting. Um, if not, uh, like self-talk. So I shared just now about the two athletes using self talk to help them bring their focus back into the performance um, working out a, a cue word that's most helpful or most relevant for yourself so there was another athlete um, they decided to use the word pineapple to help them relax and I was like why pineapple it doesn't make sense to me um, but for this athlete it was because they had a family vacation at this tourist attraction called the big pineapple Oh, and saying pineapple reminds her of the good times, and then it helps her relax. Mm. Yeah, so th- that's. I thought SpongeBob, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, good. good times um, at SpongeBob. Yeah, well, that works too if it if it means that for you. Trigger happy um, childhood memories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or if not, then there's uh, imagery. Um, so imagery for most athletes, they use it to, especially in this COVID situation where maybe some of them, well, in the. Pu- previously during circuit breaker when they couldn't train. So using imagery to rehearse the skills, mm. to practice the skills so that when they do go back into training, it doesn't feel like they had a very long break. Uh, but imagery, imagery is like they sit down and just go through the motion in their mind. Uh, like yes. Through. So I think a lot of people call it visualization mm. and I try not to use visualization. I try to call it imagery or mental rehearsal because when we talk about visualization, people think that you're only seeing things. But with imagery, you are creating an entire experience. When you experience mm. something... Mm. Um, you are hearing, mm. you might be smelling, you might be tasting, you are feeling emotionally and physically. Mm. Like just now the plane fly by, right? We experienced it, but we heard it. We didn't just, you know, yeah. it's not like just seeing it. Um, so getting, like teaching the athletes all that, but mm. we can also use it in our daily life. If let's say we have to do a, you know, we need to make a pitch. That's a very important presentation. We can use imagery to rehearse that mm. presentation. Mm. Or, you know, if someone throws a very difficult question, we can rehearse in our mind how we want to respond to. Mm. Maybe not the particular question, but how we want to respond to that. Wow, shit, it's a difficult question. Mm. What's going to be my, say, set response? Oh, that's a really good question. Let me have some time to think about it. Can I respond to you at the end of this? Let's have a, pro- like, let's take this oh. discussion offline. So you can rehearse all right. that. Yeah, so that's, all those can be applicable even in daily life. Uh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, that's quite interesting. Because I also realized that, uh, you know, like esports, mm. like the those gaming, yeah. they also have psychologists on their yeah. team. Those big organizations. Because mm. it's uh, actually a big part of their, their how they, they try. It's like performance uh, mm. also, la, like getting the, the esports athletes to, you know, like. Because like when you play like play certain games, there's always like back and forth, mm. and sometimes they make mistakes. Uh, the game generally is about like generally people don't play perfectly. Mm. Yeah, it's hard to play perfectly as a team. Yeah, and then you make small mistakes, and there's about also about resetting that mindset Mm-mm-mm. that it's okay. You know about yeah. communications, how how they can uh, communicate such that they don't like put blame on each other, for Mm-mm. example. Mm. Or sometimes some people dwell in their mistakes for very long, like shit, I should have done that, I should have done that, and because of that they are more afraid to make plays in, in, in the next like 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Oh. so yeah, risk adverse. Yeah, they are more risk adverse yeah. and that also affects the whole how the team plays. Mm. Yeah, I think all those also were quite, quite interesting. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, a lot of, a lot of transfer mm. between, yeah. yeah. No, that's quite interesting. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else that we, you want to cover? Mm. We, we look like we have a long list, uh, but actually it's only need <laughs> <laughs> five points. Yeah. <laughs> then we are but looking at the like same we, five we points. We covered a lot of things that weren't even in this list. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. Okay, la, I think we can call it for the day. Uh, I think this should be about over, over one hour. One hour, maybe eight minutes. Mm. Yeah. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, thanks, we, Joyce, for joining us. Yeah, no yeah, thanks, thanks for, for coming me. all the way down. This oh, is like, what time is it now? It's like 10, 11. <laughs> she came here at 9.30am. Yeah. 
She yeah. had to wake up at 7. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, Take care of your mental health. Yeah, mental health is important. <laughs> uh, do you have links that they, people can go to if let's say they have... Uh, I mean, I'll probably like go research and add uh, some. Yeah. I'll put some links. Online. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. If, you, if you are struggling or like you feel um, like you need to speak to someone, there's always... Uh, there's oh. always... What they call it? Help out there. Mm. Yeah, you just oh, need I, to. I, I read this article recently. They talk about. I think there's this group of people trying to create journal templates and then they distribute it for free at like IMH or something. Journal so journaling for oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah like, journaling, so journaling's yeah. a coping mechanism. Mm. 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 Yeah, yeah yeah yeah. So so if you guys have or if you you guys have like I think this is a a topic that um is quite interesting at least for for us. Mm. Uh, so if you have questions to talk about like for us to discuss or anything any questions uh, can hit us up in Instagram or Facebook or on YouTube maybe yep. there will be a part 2 yep. yeah who knows <laughs> part 2 <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thanks for listening and uh, we see you guys again goodbye bye, bye.